Good day all and welcome once again to my YouTube channel. So today we are going to be looking at mathematics and the topic in math that we are considering is variation. Now we have diverse topics in the world of mathematics and this is one of them and it's a very very important topic especially those of you that are preparing to write in jam, YEC and other related exams. Now I will run through the series of variation taking it step by step so for those that are still having issues with it, try to stay tuned and be very very attentive as I run through the series of variation. So we'll start by looking at the fundamentals of variation, looking at the types, as well as calculations involving the different types of variation. All right. So now, what is variation? When we talk about variation in English, when you say something varies, it means that that thing is not is not um, static. It is dynamic, meaning it changes, it's subjected to changes. All right. So now, looking at mathematics, variation talks about quantities that are subjected to changes. And usually, these quantities could be two or even more than two. So you could be having, uh, you know, uh, an increase in a given quantity leading to an increase in another. Or you could be having a decrease in a given quantity leading to a decrease in the other. Or you could be having an increase in a given quantity leading to a decrease in the other and all that. So we are about considering all these stuffs. So just be very, very attentive, all right? Now, what are the types of variation? In the world of maths, we have four types of variation. And what are they? Number one, we have the direct variation. We have the direct variation. Then we have the inverse. The inverse variation. We have the inverse variation. Then we have the joint, the joint variation, and we have the partial variation, partial variation, all right? So these are the four types of variations that we have in mathematics. So I believe that this um, class will be split into two uh, videos. So this is the first video. So in the second video, we'll be considering the joint and the partial. But in this video, we'll be looking at the direct and the inverse. But before we start by looking at the direct variation, I would love to introduce you to the world of variation in terms of the fundamentals that are used in variation. And what are some of these things that you need to understand? In the world of variation or mathematics, you have this sign. This sign is called the proportionality sign. Yeah, the proportionality sign. And this sign is commonly used in variation. So the first thing for you to see in a question, whether it's a variation question or not, is this one. So when you have proportionality sign, it indicates what? Variation, all right? And then the second thing is this. After you've introduced this proportionality sign to your variation, then you don't work with it. You can't work with proportionality sign. So you have to introduce an equality sign as well as a constant. So the first thing is this one being present in the equation. And the second, is the introduction the introduction of equality sign the introduction of equality sign and a constant all right so you introduce equality sign and constant in order to eliminate the proportionality sign because you can work with that and then the third thing you do is that since you've already introduced a constant then you tend to calculate the value of the constant. That's the third thing that you do. So you calculate, you calculate the value, the value of the constant. Because the reason why you are calculating the value of the constant is that anything you get as the value of the constant, you now use it to show a relationship between the quantities that you are giving in the question. All right? And by that, you can actually calculate for the values of either of the quantities. Yes, that's even the fourth one. So the fourth one is to calculate, calculate the value of either of the quantities, either of the quantities in the question. All right. I'm going to explain all this when we start by looking at direct variation. All right. But mind you, you should always take cognizance of the fact that constant is very, very important that you should introduce. So let's start by looking at 
the direct variation. When we talk about direct variation, what are we referring to? It is a type of variation in which you are having two quantities of which an increase in one of the quantities results in an increase in the other. Just like, for example, if you are told x varies directly as y. Now, the interpretation of this is that an increase in x, an increase in x leads to an increase in y, while a decrease in x leads to a decrease in y. That's just it. So it means that uh, when you are having uh, maybe your range of values of x will be 2, 4, 6, 8. Of course, if 2, you want to relate it to y, y values, it should be 2, 4, then 2 to y should be, let's say, 2, and then 4 to y for 4 of x should be, let's say, 4 in y. So it's just like you increasing the values of x that will be resulting in a corresponding increase in what value also, values of y. Do you understand the point? So it means when you increase values of x, it increases the values of y. And when the values of x drop, there should be a drop in the value of y. Alright? So, let's see, um, let's say you are having what I just initially explained. x to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Do you know what it means? It means since these values are increasing, then if you are having your y values, it should also be what? Increasing. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and all that. You get the point? So that's just what direct variation entails. All right? And when there's also decrease, there should be decrease in the values of y. Now, what we will look at now would be on questions involving direct variation. This is a question. So this question on the board is, we are having two questions here for direct variation. If x varies directly, with y and y equal to 12 when x equal to 3. Find the relationship between x and y. Hence, calculate the value of x when y is equal to 4. So let's get started. First thing that we must do is to represent the expression x varies directly as y. Alright? And of course, you know that you can work with proportionality sign in variation. So you have to introduce um, an equality sign with a constant, k. So the k here is the constant. All right, so that's the constant value. Then the next, we are told to find the relationship between x and y. How do we get the relationship between x and y? These two values that you are giving for x and y, they are to finding the value of k. So the reason for, for you being given this, uh, these two is for you to get the k value. Coming back to this expression, you can get it easily because your x is given the question to be 3. So 3 equal to, then your y is 12. So it becomes 12k. Yes, because y is 12. So 12 times k is k, 12k. So you now divide both sides. So getting your k, you divide both sides by the coefficient of k here, being 12. And that becomes over 12 over 12. So 12 will cancel out. And then 3 into itself is 1. 3 into 12 is 4. So our k is equal to 1 over 4. All right? So now, you can actually get the relationship between x and y in a given expression. How? From here, you can impute the value of k to be x equal to 1 over 4 times y, which is still the same as x equal to what? y over 4. So this is the formula that shows the relationship between x and y. The formula that shows the relationship between, between x and y, all right? So, then for you to, in the second question, they say, hence, calculate the value of x when y equal to 4. So you can easily get the value of x here, very easy. All you simply do is just to impute the value of y, which is given to be 4, and then you get your answer. So x equal to, our value of y is what? 4, then over what? 4. So 4 into 4 is what? 1. So hence, our value of x is what? Is 1. That's the answer, very easy. Very, very easy. So long you are able to get the formula showing the relationship between the two entities in the question, then you can easily get any question you're giving on a given expression. All right. Then let's see the second question. The second question is that they said, if P minus 5 varies directly with the square of R and P equal to 13 when R equal to 4, find P when R equal to 10. Now you must know the discrepancy between these two. Square. Square and square root. 
All right. Now, when we say square, we are referring to, for example, if I say the square of two, two squares, that's two times two, which is four. But if I tell you the square root of four is written like this, so it means a number that you multiply by itself to get a given number. And that becomes, you know that the square root of four, the only number you can multiply by itself to give you four is two times two. So it means the square root of four is two. All right, so please don't mistake square for square root. So looking at this uh, question, it said if p minus five, so question two, if p minus five varies directly with the square of arrow, varies directly with the square of arrow, we have already gotten the expression. And p equal to 13 when r equal to 4. Very easy. So from here, remember that you don't work with this side. So what are you supposed to do now? It becomes p minus 5, then equal to, you introduce a constant, k r squared. And remember that we need to calculate the value of what? Of k. So getting the value of k, we are provided with these two values, p and r. And our p is 13, while our r is what? 4. So 13 in place of p minus 5, equal to k then times 4 squared and that becomes 13 minus 5 equal to 4 squared is 16 because 4 times 4 is 16 then that becomes 16 k and 13 minus 5 gives you what 8 so 8 equal to 16 k and then you divide both sides by what 16 and when you do that it becomes uh, 8 into itself is 1 8 into 16 is 2 so therefore, my k is equal to 1 over 2. So let's get the formula showing the relationship between the two entities, p and r. So from here, after we have introduced our constant, we can easily get it. That becomes p minus 5, then equal to, what's our k value now? Of course, it's 1 over 2. So it becomes 1 over 2 r square. And you know you can multiply this two now. It becomes p minus 5 equal to r square over 2. It's the same thing. When you say 1 times r square, which is r square. So this is the formula that is showing the relationship between p and r. So now, to the question. It said 5p when r is equal to 10. So we can come to this place. We are looking for p. So it becomes p minus 5 is equal to r here is what? 10 from the question. 10 square, 10 square over 2. And don't forget that 10 squared is 100. So that becomes P minus 5 equal to 100 over 2. Of course, it's obvious that you can easily divide there. So when you divide, it becomes P minus 5 equal to 100 divided by 2. I mean, that, beco that becomes what? 50 here. Yeah. So it's 50. So 100 divided by 2 is 50. And that becomes what now? P equal to 50 plus 5 because we just collected like terms here. You understand the point? 10 squared is 100 divided by 2 is uh, 50 and then uh, this one moving to the other side turns plus. When negative crosses the equality sign turns positive and then that becomes P is equal to 55. So that's the answer. Alright? So that is for direct variation. Then let's see questions on inverse variation. Now a question on Inverse variation, which is question one here, is t varies inversely as r and t equal to 20 while r equal to 35. Find the formula which connects t and r. So from the expression, t is inversely proportional or varies inversely as r. So by the introduction of a constant here, it becomes t equal to what? k over r. This formula is very important. Now we are given the value of t to be 20 and the value of r to be 35. So that becomes 20 in place of t equal to k over 35. And when you do that, it becomes, uh, by cross multiplication, it becomes k equal to 20 times 35. And that becomes 700. Then we've not gotten the formula yet until we impute or substitute 700 for k in this equation. And that becomes t is equal to 700 over r. So this becomes our answer, all right? So this is the formula that shows the relationship or connects the two um, quantities, t and r. That's question one. In the second question, the second question, if a, if a minus two varies inversely as b cube, and a equal to six when b equal to two, find the value of a when b equal to one over four. 
So from here, you can introduce a constant and an equality sign. That becomes A minus 2, then equal to K over B cubed. Of course, we are giving the um, two quantities in terms of their values, A equal to 6 and B equal to 2. So solve for your K, and that becomes A being 6 minus 2 equal to what's our um, K value unknown, and what's our B value is giving the question to be what 2. So we are looking for our K value, so 2 cube. And 2 cube is 2 times 2 times 2, that's 8. That becomes 6, or rather, we can just go straight. 6 minus 2 is 4, equal to k over 8. And when you cross multiply, it becomes k equal to 4 times 8, which is 32. Alright? So we can just come to this formula here and impute our value of k. That becomes a equal to minus 2 equal to 32 over b cubed. So this is the formula that is showing the relationship between the two entities or quantities. Okay, then from here, we are told to calculate the value or find the value of a when b equal to 1 over 4. So we can easily get it a minus 2 equal to 32 over 1 over 4 cube. All right, and don't forget that 1 over 4 cube is still simply 1 times 1 times 1 over 4 times 4 times 4. 1 times 1 times 1 is 1, then 4 times 4 times 4 is what? 64. That's 4 times 1 is 16, 16 times 4 is 64. So this can be written as a minus 2 equal to 32 over 1 over 64. So we can resolve this by a minus 2 equal to, this can be written as 32 divided by 1 over 64. And this can be written as a minus 2 equal to 32 times uh, 64 over 1, which is, the, which is still the same thing as a minus 2 equal to 32 times 64. That becomes, um, we have 64, we have 32, 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 6 is 12, then um, 3 times 4 is 12, then 3 times 6, 18, then we have 19, here becomes 8, 4, then here is 0, and here is 2. So we have 2, 0, 4, 8, all right? So from here, we can, we can collect items by simply making A to stand on this one, that becomes 2048 plus 2. When the negative crosses, it turns plus. So that becomes A equal to 2050. All right? So this is our value of A. All right? So it's my hope that you've been able to understand everything about uh, the direct variation and the inverse. All right? So don't forget, when we say direct, it means that um, when there is an increase in the quantity of, let's say, a given value x, there should also be another increase in the quantity of a given value y. In case of inverse, when there's an increase in x, there should be a decrease in y. And when there's a decrease in y, there should be an increase in x. You get the point. So that's just about the direct and the inverse variation. So in our second video, we're looking at joint variation as well as partial variation and questions that are related to both of them, all right? So please, if you like this video, give a thumbs up and then don't forget to stay tuned to this channel, subscribe and share the videos. Make your friends to be aware of it so that they can also benefit from this channel. Thanks and God bless.